All right, so we have a WordPress um, site. If we created one at the .com, we have a site to work with. If you've got your own site, you can use it, of course. And I gave you a handout, which we'll look in a little more detail right now. And I started to then show some examples of clients and real-world examples. I would, not just to toot our own horn, but I would look at some of those clients and see, you know, this is, we practice what we preach, what I would say in the class we would do for a client. And so I want to look at the first section of my handout here. So you should have gotten a copy of it, either printed it out or you can look at it on the computer. We've got three big sections. This is the WordPress checklist. Everything you need to think about when writing long-form blog content. So notice what I'm saying. Everything you need to think about. I'm not saying do all of these things for success. I'm saying these are things to think about that might help you toward success in blogging. And I mentioned also, you might not have heard about it this way, long-form blog content. Well, the opposite of long form would be short form blogging. What do you think short, for, short, for, short form blogging might be? Let's think about it as short as 140 characters. What's that? Twitter. Social media is then the short form, con short form blog content. Long form is WordPress where I'm going to write 100 words. Uh, Short form is social media, where I'm going to send out a short tweet, or I'm going to post something short on Facebook, or I'm going to make a little video on YouTube. So we'll have a little distinction here. Long form blog, WordPress. Short form blog, social media. Oftentimes, the short form is a link back to your long form. You're going to write 500 words or whatever on your WordPress, but you're not going to fit all those 500 words in a tweet, and you're not going to put all those 500 words on Facebook. No one's going to read it. People on Facebook, people on all social media, we have very short attention spans. Think about it. You see something, it's nice, you move on, what's next? Maybe some of us have longer attention spans, some of us have shorter, but oftentimes it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy in that, well, I've got a short blog here, a short tweet, so I only get a little bit of attention for it, but it's short, so I can't give too much to it, so I get a little bit from it. And so I might tweet something, I might post something on Instagram to get an attention, someone's attention, and that's a link back to the long form. These articles for Texcoco, that one about Wheat La Coche, you know, it's a couple hundred words long, and we have a little teaser for it on Pinterest. Someone clicks on it on Pinterest, and then they come to read the whole thing on the blog. And then they're enticed, and then they have the order online, or they have book a table. So here's the first, some of the first things you have to think about before you, 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 you start writing. So this is the planning. These are the ideas of planning. The first one, decide on self-hosted versus Hosted. Will your site be on one of the free platforms like WordPress.com, Tumblr.com, Blogger.com, even on LinkedIn or Facebook now you can blog. So you're going to use one of those free ones. Or will it be on your own server, which is not free? So this is basically decide on free or paid version of the blog. Free would be WordPress, Tumblr, Blogger, Blogspot. I don't even know if they're separate things anymore. LinkedIn blogs, Facebook blogs. You can do blogging on Facebook. Those are all those free ones. They're a quick way for you to get started, to write, to start writing, to start getting traffic. The other way is paid. That's GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostGator, one and one, on and on, etc. There's hundreds of these providers, service providers, where you will pay some amount of money, twenty to a hundred and twenty dollars a year. Very huge range of payment. 
most commonly it's between seventy and eighty dollars a year you're renting you're basically staking a claim to your piece of the internet with one of these providers just like if you're buying a house you don't really own it until you pay off that mortgage um, or if you're renting obviously someone else owns it you're paying to live there that's basically what a website is everyone does this even apple.com and microsoft.com and google.com are paying someone to have their piece of the internet you can do the same you can go to any of these providers check their prices and services we'll have a deeper discussion on that later and then you could have victor.com instead of victor.wordpress.com instead of linkedin.com slash victor's blog slash article one you can have your own address your own piece of the internet that you own when you go with one of these providers this is my recommendation the paid version but we're not going to pay for anything in this class I forgot to say also because this class is not part of a certificate program there is no homework there are no assignments there's no grades there's no certificate at the end of the day you don't get any grades if you really want a grade okay everyone gets an A plus um, but what you get out of the class uh, hopefully is this knowledge for you to apply directly to making good blogs writing good blogs All right, so that's that's the idea there. Um, quick show of hands. How many of you have heard of GoDaddy.com? I have GoDaddy for my name. Okay. GoDaddy is one of the biggest ones. So big they've had Super Bowl commercials. How many of you have heard of Bluehost.com? HostGator, etc. There's lots of them. Has anyone heard of one that I have not mentioned here? There's lots of them. I don't know them all. If you're thinking of getting service with one of them, if one of them costs ten dollars and one of these costs twelve dollars, well, what I would do is search for testimonials about that company. If I'm getting amazing, amazinghosting.net, I'm going to search for amazinghosting.net testimonials, and I'm going to see what people say because they're going to say how great they are themselves, of course. But you should see what other people say about them too. Decide on which one. My recommendation? Get paid. Well, I'm calling them here. Hosted, self-hosted. Hosted is the free one. Someone else will host it for you. Self-hosted is you are paying for it. You are hosting it, basically. My recommendation, get paid, self-hosted service. That is more complex, but in the long term, you get more out of it. If you take the WordPress class, we go into much more detail about everything that you get. Another reason why you want self-hosted you're giving someone else the traffic, really. If you're on, if I'm victor.tumblr.com, if I'm, you know, Victor's restaurant at blogspot.com, I'm giving blogspot.com the traffic, not my own website. Number two, develop a series concept. What can you write about in the long term? A blog should entice people to come back to your site time after time. Plan content that you would be happy to constantly write about. So, number two, blogging works best in the long term. Writing one amazing blog post is great for today, but what are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do next week, next month, next year? You should be planning on writing for a long time. You should plan on writing something, as the rest of my handout will say, you should plan on writing consistently. So it's in my handout, but uh, one goal, basic goal, 100 words per month, basic goal. 
there will be many of articles out there that tell you make sure you're writing 200 words every week. Well, that's a good, that, that is good advice. 100 words per month is also good advice because it's going to depend on many factors. Are you able to write 200 words every week? Can you think of something to write every week? If you can't, that's okay. Don't, don't give yourself writer's block. Don't burn yourself out. Don't make yourself hate this because you should be doing it on the long term. And if you're going to start with one article per month, that I think is very attainable. 100 words is very attainable. A thousand words a month is even better because it comes back to the content. So in short, create content on a regular basis. We saw those simple searches we did about Witla Koche, very recent articles, one a year ago, one a few months ago, etc. They're current, they're recent. It's not a stodgy old article that was updated um, you know, two years ago, that uh, that was uploaded two years ago, five years ago, that you think it was amazingly written, but someone else wrote something amazing too more recently with more modern content. How do you quote an article? Like if you see an article and you want to go there, do you have to ask them to use That's a little bit off of our topic for the moment. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to go off to some other site and, and, and ask them. Although with the modern kinds of websites, you don't really need to ask, especially if it's online and public. And yes, there's a whole nuance, because it's off topic, there's a whole nuance about it, but it doesn't hurt to go, to go ask. So what I'm saying here is, okay, if you're going to write in the long term, what are you going to write about in the long term? We'll have an activity a little later where we do brainstorming for everyone that chooses to do so. Um, so what can I think about in the long term? So here's some ideas, some quick ideas. I can give the example like this. I'm going to have, again, uh, Victor's writing, or whatever I call it. I'm going to write uh, reviews, restaurant reviews. I'm going to share recipes. That could be the series, a couple of my series. My monthly restaurant review my um, bi-weekly recipe. I have to think about things related. I don't have to always be the exact same thing over and over, a review or a recipe. No, I can jazz it up a little bit, such as um, you know, community events. Food-related community events. If I have a goal of 100 words every month, I should they have a couple of different ideas of what I could be writing every month. What variety are you going to write about? If you go look again at the example of Texcoco, there are these various articles that explain a traditional Mexican food. There are articles about events. There are articles, there's one about like childhood obesity. There's a variety of topics about food and how that client, that restaurant, relates to food. So two and three are related to each other. You've got a concept, what are you going to write about in the long term? How are you going to get people to keep coming back? Let me say one more thing about that. Do you have content people want to subscribe to? It's very easy to put that subscribe now button. But as I said previously, a lot of us don't want to give out our emails. We get too much spam. And so do I have articles that, it's going, that are going to convince people to subscribe? Write or word, word it so that people want to give you their email. So bad 
subscribe. Add, subscribe now. And any of that kind of variation. If you're if you're not telling them why, basically. Good. Subscribe for the latest articles. Good. Keep up to date with the latest news. Good. Share your email for VIP content. So instead of simply uh, some very simple wording like that, no, you're going to steal my email address and sell it to people and I'm going to get spam. But if I go this way, oh, I'm going to get VIP content no one else knows about. Let me subscribe. That's also what two is saying, number two is saying there about what are you going to write that convinces people to keep coming back. Well, they may not come back to your site, they may not remember to come back, but if they subscribed, they will get either the full article or a portion of the article mailed to them. And by a WordPress, we can make it very easy for people to subscribe and for us that every time we write something new, it gets sent to people. Within your niche of expertise, plan on writing on a variety of related topics. Instead of always writing about one subject, plan on also writing on two to three related ones. So two and three really mix together a lot, but two is the concept that you're going to do this in the long term. And three is, well, you need to think about a variety of things at once. Uh, what are you going to write about? Go check those examples of those clients. Go to vmc.net and see that it's not all financial info. It's also info about apps and programming and other tech things. So three. Think of a main topic. for your writings, and two to three related topics. Alternate the topics at your choosing. If you're always writing about the same topic every week, it gets a little boring, perhaps. It's not exactly related, but how many of you uh, use YouTube on a regular basis? How many of you go watch videos on YouTube on a regular basis? Now, probably, if you subscribe to a YouTube channel, they're not always the exact same kind of thing. They're not the exact same kind of video over and over. They probably change it up a little bit. So that's a video blog, if you haven't thought about it. YouTube is a video blog. A blog we might think of it very traditionally as writing. But the new generation, the next frontier, might be video blogging. And think about how those videos that you watch are probably a variety. They're related. It's a review, or it's a cooking thing, or it's uh, financial info, but it's, it's a variety. So alternate to keep it fresh for your readers. So once a month, topic X. Every other month, topic Y. Once a week, topic Z. You know, maybe my once a month I'm doing, you know, 150 words. Every other month, 100 words once a week, uh, 50 words. You may think that's a very short article. Sure, but it's you're creating content. You're creating, as we will see going forward, you're creating content with keywords of what people are searching for. The point is create articles full of keywords that people 
may search for. Well, if I'm saying that you're going to be writing this much, point number four, going solo or not, are you going to write everything yourself? Are you going to have other people in your organization write as well? Are you going to have ghost writers, guest writers, paid writers? Number four, to avoid writer's block or burnout, get more people to write with you. So, others in your business, ghostwriters, guestwriters, paid writers, So I have, a, let's say I have a web design company, and me and one or two other people are also going to write articles on our web design company so that we can follow our schedule of writing on a regular basis. What I would say about that, get other people that want to write and know how to write. <laughs> get those that uh, they can uh, spell properly at least. So it's very easy. You're the boss. Okay, Bill, you're also going to write this week. Yes, you're doing payroll, but you're also going to write something. Do they know how to write? Do they want to write? If they don't want to write, it's going to show up in the writing. It's going to not be quality content. If they want to write, but then they're not the best at writing, are you going to spend your time fixing what they wrote? You might as well have written it yourself. So get other people that want to do it. Don't put this on someone else when they're already doing another job in your business. Let's say I'm solo. I'm the only person in my business, so I don't have others to, uh, to, to lean on. Then we've got these ones, ghost writers, guest writers, paid writers. A ghost writer is someone else who writes your blog, you get the credit. Whatever agreement, whatever contract, verbal or paper contract, whatever agreement you have with someone else, you have decided with that person, you're going to write something for me, but I'm going to put my name on it. Obviously, it's not stealing if you have made an agreement with them. Best practice, of course, have it written down because a verbal contract is worth the paper it's written on. So the point of this is I don't have time to write, but I'm going to hire someone else and they'll do it for me. It'll be under my name, under my business. Done. Based on your agreement. Guest writers. Someone else writes you or them gets the credit based on the agreement. Okay, that sounds very similar to ghost writers. The big difference is that other person may get a credit. It may have the article and it'll say by John Smith. It's on my site, but I gave them a spot to write something on the topic that I asked for. Someone else wrote it because I didn't have the time. They wrote it, their name is on it. If their name is not on it, it's basically ghostwriting. Let me show you a tangible example. One of the sites that I like to visit, I'm not related to this one at all, but I like investorjunkie.com. A lot of financial advice there. Investor Junkie wants to sell you their services. 
helping you become a better investor. They're going to sell you some sort of service for investing. But they've got over on Educate a whole series of free articles. That's their blog. They're not literally calling it blog, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be called blog. It, become, it can be called news, it can be called updates, it can be called articles. But Investor Junkie's blog is under Educate. Okay, lots of stuff for me to buy from them? Sure. But I want to educate myself. So if I go look at an article, there are all of these different topics. Debt and loan, economics, investing, promos, taxes, whatever. So let's say I go look at the uh, investing section. Ten financial milestones to achieving your 20s and 30s. Three common types of investment scams and how to avoid them. Four lessons to teach your teens about long-term investing. Okay, lots of great articles. I bring up this site again. I have no affiliation with it, but I've got there's a lot of articles here that I recommend you to check out because these follow the concepts that we're talking about in this class about creating content on a regular basis full of keywords and great content. And what I'm getting at regarding guest writing, if I go look at any one of these, 10 financial milestones, someone wrote it, lots of um, lots of uh, stuff to read, and this was written by Kevin Mercadante, May 2016, pretty recent. Notice Kevin's name is active, it's clickable. I click there, it shows me all of the articles he's written for this site, and he has his own little blurb. He has his own spot where it says, look at me, follow my Twitter, check out my website. That's the purpose, a possible purpose, of guest writing. Have other people write for you, and in exchange, you'll give them a link back to their own website. You don't have to pay them, whatever agreement you have, this could be enough. This is like when up-and-coming struggling models say, okay, well, uh, we'll do an exchange. You photograph me for my portfolio for free. Usually a model is paid. Well, a model starting off has no experience, so you, you trade photos for the work. Same thing here. Uh, I want to get my articles out there to the world to show that I'm a good financial person and so I'm gonna to go to this website that is pretty big and I'm gonna write articles for free for them but I get a link back to my own to my own website out of your rut.com I'm gonna randomly choose another one um, Avoid investing in companies with attributes of bad business. Okay, let's see who wrote that one. Oh, Kevin wrote that one too. Um, how much is 1% costing you? Larry Ludwig. So, another person. I go to his author page here. Uh, he's got his link to his about page, to his Google profile, etc. So, guest writers on this website, writing out on all of these related topics, and they get credit. So guest writers, someone else writes, you or them get the credit based on agreement. Oftentimes they get a link back to their website. They get free traffic back to their website. And you might say, I don't want to give free traffic away. Well, again, it's all up to you and the agreement that you have with the guest writers. Where do you find them? Well, there's Craigslist. That's the best place. Uh, you can put out an ad there that you're looking for writers. You could put it on your home page. You could make it obvious on your home page with a link there. Looking for guest writers. Send us an email. And then you work it out between the two of you. LinkedIn has a system where you can go find a freelancer. Obviously, we can't get into detail in this class about it, but if you go into LinkedIn in the section, I think it's under interests, there's a section there where you can go find a freelancer, hire someone at some reasonable rates for people to write for you. The reason, again, then is you don't have the time. You're running your own business, and now you've got to do the writing. Then the last one goes toward that, paid writers. Someone else writes... you or them get the credit 
money exchanged. And there's a huge range. Someone could be charging $10 per article, $100 per article. Someone could be writing, charging you per hour. Usually it's per article and it ranges so much, $20 to $50 an article. That might be valuable to you. It might help you because then they're creating the content that helps you get found. With all of these that someone else is working on, however, I have to say for all of them, for all options, check samples. Read examples. See what they've written, hopefully on someone else's site. Because if, they, if the only credit they give you is their own site, obviously it's completely controlled. But if you can get examples from some other site where they've written, you can check. I like the way they write. It makes sense how they write. It's very professional and affordable. I'll hire them. Even for ghostwriters and guestwriters, even if you're getting someone completely for free, check what they've done. It might be a waste of your time and effort if you get some guestwriter but it's written badly, it's off topic, it's very short, and you have to go in and fix mistakes. So those are the first four things to think about. Uh, we'll be looking at writing and the third one next time. Any questions then on this first section, planning? Yes? It's a good way to narrow down what you want to write about because usually it's like you have so much stuff and then you have to start going. <laughs> I think that'll best be answered with what we're about to do in a moment where we're going to start to brainstorm. We're going to see all these ideas and then we'll see about narrowing it down. It's not that bad of an idea to have a lot of ideas. It's not that bad of a problem to have a lot of ideas to write because then you have a series, number two and number three. Any other questions?